so cool. So <laughs> talk to us about the the ball work for Illmatic, man, because the ball work is to me is the highlight of the, of the album. You know, talk to us about that, man. I think here, <clears throat> I think in order to understand lyrically where he's at, we have to understand the past first. You know what I'm saying? And so, I always tell people, Illmatic isn't Illmatic isn't 95, isn't 94 on. Illmatic is 86 to 94. Like it encompasses that era, that movement, and that feeling, and. This is the best way that I can describe it to people. I've been fortunate enough to like go to Italy and to like see the Sistine Chapel and see the frescoes on the ceiling. I'm a I'm 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 a big like I'm big in the I'm big into the arts, not just hip hop. Like I love poetry, I love you know painting, sculpting, like 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 I'm into all that. When you go into the Sistine Chapel, uh the the famous painter and sculptor and you know just avant garde Raphael was slated to do the Sistine Chapel first. Raphael still has one of the best hands in the history of painting and art, okay? And so when you go into the Sistine Chapel, the first half of the Sistine Chapel that you see is actually Raphael's work. It's super detailed. It's very, 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 very complex. It's high, high level shit, okay? And so in this instance, 86 to 94, we have a lot of Raphaels. We have a KRS one. We have a Rock M. We have a Cool G Rap. We have a Big Daddy Kane. We have a LL Cool J. We have a Slick Rick. We have a Chuck D. We got us some Raphaels. When you get to a certain part of the Sistine Chapel, the hand doesn't change that much, but the hand gets a little bit more slightly defined and the color scheme gets better. That's because Michelangelo finished the Sistine Chapel. And no disrespect to Raphael, because he's one of the greatest painters of all time. But Michelangelo is probably the best painter of all time. And you don't understand how truly immaculate and brilliant and great Michelangelo is until you see how he leveled up what Raphael did. And he was actually a protege of Raphael. Illmatic is our portion of the Sistine Chapel that Michelangelo did. It's like, oh no, we've got guys that have operated on that level, but not quite with the same hand and not quite with the same full scope of understanding how to use color schemes. The color schemes on Illmatic are that vivid imagery that we're talking about on New York State of Mind. Yep. It's different. It's a level up from his predecessors. Yep. Now, at the time, nobody wanted to admit it, but as time is shown, time is Illmatic. Raphael is not better than Michelangelo. Nobody in Italy believes that either. Trust me, I had the conversation. The color schemes and the detail, like the detail between Raphael and Michelangelo is similar. So in this case, if you wanted to use Rakim as an example. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, the hand is similar. The hand is all-time great and brilliant. But the colors that Michelangelo used, it pops more. It stands out more. And that's what Illmatic is. Illmatic is Michelangelo's portion of the Sistine Chapel. Yeah, that's a good analogy. For real. It is. That, that's what it is. Like, <laughs> it's not like the Sistine Chapel didn't exist before, but there's something about the way Michelangelo used the color that it just hit us different. It's updating the formula, you know? Updating the formula. Mm -hmm. And so. It's, it's as special as it gets is what I'm saying. If you ever get, I encourage anybody, if you ever get the opportunity, even if you want to go, don't want to go to Italy, it's like, motherfucker, go to France and fly over for a day and go see what I'm talking about. You will see the difference in the hand. It's just the elevation and the process of it. Nas is the elevation and the process of the high level lyricism that Big Daddy Kane and Rock M and Cool G Rap and all those guys birthed. He is the updated formula. Illmatic is the centerpiece of that. And so it is literally, <clears throat> and he, people understand this. This is an album that I still consider to be the greatest rap album of all time. And a lot of people feel the same way. It sold 63,000 copies this first week. It didn't go gold until January of 1996, almost two years after its release. There has never been an album in any genre of music that is revered 
the way that this album is that doesn't have the sales attached to it. And that's part of what makes it so important. It's also our quality control album, guys. It's the mm -hmm. album that says numbers may not lie, but they don't mean everything. Facts. Mm -hmm. Facts. This is the album where you can stake that claim on. This is the album where you say, oh, I don't care how many fucking units you move. Can you take that shit to the neighborhood? What the niggas in the neighborhood say about it? Like, mm -hmm. let's look at an album that came out six months before, Doggy Style. Oh, Doggy mm -hmm. Style did five mil. Illmatic's quality and critical acclaim and, 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 and the way it's revered, you would think Illmatic did five million too. Right. And that is mostly because <laughs> this guy is rhyming at a level that quite frankly, we have not really seen outside of Rock M's prime and Biggie's prime and his own prime, which transcends transition into 96. It is the best collection of rhymes that you can understand that come from a complex place and a complex structure in a man's mind that we can all relate to. This is the album that lyrically is succinctly New York. But I say this as somebody is from Atlanta and from Charlotte. Oh, no. I felt like he was talking about the neighborhoods I grew up in. I know niggas in Houston that feel the same way. Niggas in Cali that feel the same way. And that's what puts it lyrically ahead of all those other projects from New York rappers before. Because the way he described those Queensbridge projects, it sounded like all our projects. And the hardest thing for a great writer to do is to connect with the audience. And never has there been a high-level lyrical album that connects with this culture and the fabric of who we are in hip hop, the way Illmatic does. There hasn't been an album like it before. It. There hasn't been like an album like it since. And there's not about to be. It is the greatest rap album that's ever been made. Period. Point blank. For that reason. No. When that shit wasn't selling, go to any fucking hood. It's like, yo, he talking like it's my neighborhood. Yeah. I know niggas that don't like Nas. I know niggas down here that's like, yo, I don't fuck with Nas. I'll be like, how you feel about Illmatic? Be like, that's that shit. Right. I said I didn't like Nas. I didn't say I didn't like Illmatic. Don't yep. nobody. When have you ever heard somebody say Illmatic's not a classic? Never. Where? We can go to fucking Omaha, Nebraska, right now, my nigga. There are niggas that know how to quote that shit. And that's a fact. Mm -hmm. it, and it's coming from the pen of somebody. He penned that when he was like eighteen, nineteen years old. You know. Yeah. So it, it, it's rap's best album. It is the connective tissue for us in every hood and every neighborhood. Like he might come from the largest housing project in America, but he explained all our housing projects in that album. Right. And he explained right. it masterfully, intricately, and he expressed it with just enough despair and somber tone that we all gravitated towards it. It's like, oh, no, that dark cloud is over me, too. That dark cloud on the world is yours. It's like, oh, no, that's over me. Oh, it's like, oh, there's shootouts in your neighborhood. That's funny. A nigga just got shot the other day in my neighborhood in, in front of me. You know what I'm saying? He talked right. about things that were relatable to us coming from our neighborhoods, but he talked about it on such a high level without going over our heads. It is literally the most magnificent feat in the history of hip hop to talk at a high level without Absolutely. going over anybody's head. To, to, Anybody. to, your point, to, to your point, Coop, I had been to New York as a, you know, a youth, but Illmatic came out when I was 13 me and too. listening to the album made me understand New York from the imagery more than actually stepping foot in New York prior to that. You know Absolutely. what I mean? That's that's what his pen did for me anyways. Yeah, but cool. he did that. But that's what I mean. That sentiment that you share, yep. that's the worldwide and the nationwide sentiment about this album. It is the only rap album that we have like that. It is the only rap album. Like, <clears throat> like there are niggas in New York that don't love Equimini the way niggas in the South love Equimini. There are niggas in the Midwest that don't love Doggy Style the way niggas on the West love, love Doggy. You get what I'm saying? There are a lot of niggas that still ain't even listened to Paid in Full by Eric B. and Rakim. Everybody fucks with Illmatic in every right, fucking right. neighborhood in every right. part of the country because he was talking to us and through us about his neighborhood, but he made it sound like our neighborhood too. Absolutely. It's the most, it's the most impressive job of lyricism. Not the best, it's the most impressive job right. of lyricism that's ever been recorded on mic. Absolutely. Well said, cool. Well said. No doubt. Yo, a you smoked that. You smoked that. 
can 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 and can I can I submit something to you that I don't think I realized till today? I wear pink a lot. I wear pink a lot for my cousin Shonda. She died of breast cancer a few years ago. She was like my big sister, although she was my cousin. Condolences, man. When she died, I cried. But it wasn't until a little bit after she died that it changed the way that I felt and the way that I approached things. The guy that yeah. ra- that is rapping on one time for your mind and halftime, you never see that guy again. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact of what happened to Ill Will. And I think right. Ill Will's passing, not when he passed, the vitriol and the braggadocious rhyme was probably still there, but when death settles on you for somebody so close, that reflective and poignant style that the rest of Illmatic has outside of halftime and one time for your mind, I think there's a direct correlation between him losing his best friend, who was his DJ, yeah. and it switched his style because it switched his mood. Like, I ain't been the same since Shonda died. Like, emotionally, yeah. it did something to me where it's kind of like, ugh. Yeah, Jungle yeah. said he got real serious after that, you know. So, right, yeah. right. So all the bragging rhyme shit stopped, and the introspective yeah. right. lyrics that made Illmatic what it is began to take shape. Right, right. Half time, and one time for your mind are the large professor produced tracks. Outside of it, ain't hard to tell. They're the early tracks. Illmatic got built around the large pro tracks. Right, yeah. right. So right. Ill Will's death has something to do with the somber style that we see. That's a good because that's what death too. does to you. That's what death does to you when somebody you love and you're so close to. Like it might affect you right now in the sense that you might cry, but it might change your whole fucking mood and tone after a while. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. a great observation. Great observation. That's good stuff, cool. Appreciate you, cool. Yo, 